everyone, it's Mark Holloway with Meridian Medical Staffing. Um, going to go over another offer, continue our series today of understanding your offer. I actually have a good offer today, one that I, I kind of like. Matter of fact, they're doing it the right way. Um, I want to qualify a couple things. First of all, a, a number of you nurses actually sent this one to me and asked if I would specifically go over uh, this offer. It's for crisis staffing, um, um, so it's lucrative to say the least, which is nice. I do want to point out and qualify this. This is actually not a real offer, though. This is not a contract. This is strictly a website uh, advertisement for people to um, apply. So what I want to qualify this for is that I can't tell if this is real or not. And some of the things I think you guys need to understand is that a lot of you are telling us that there are people who are baiting and switching you. I can't comment on that. I don't know how a company would be willing to have you work for them knowing full well that they misled you and expect you to continue working for them for that assignment or continue to have any kind of loyalty with them um, for assignments that, that, you know, consecutively after that. But it's happening out there. And a lot of you are calling me complaining about what you got, you know, kind of um, tricked into, but yet you guys are still continuing mm -hmm. to work for those companies. So be careful. So I, again, this is not a contractual offer, which is what we've actually been showing up to now. But I did make some promises that I would go over this one with, uh, with some people. So this is strictly a alleged uh, potential, put it that way. So let's zoom in and take a look at it. Um, it's in Massachusetts, so it's 13 weeks. Um, let me tell you a couple of things I like about this. It's kind of giving you the whole background. This is how much exactly this assignment pays. They've broken it down with a taxable amount and a reasonable tax-free amount. Again, what I like about this company is they're doing it very similar to the way we do it, where they're actually giving you the total, and they're doing this by saying hourly. So those extra hours you've been talking about are going to be great and are going to actually help. Um, they're not going to. It's not. The, it's not the bad way of doing it. Um, they provided housing or stipend. They don't tell you how much. But the only negative thing I can say about this um, advertisement is that this is kind of vague. So who knows what that really comes down to? They've shown their their travel and everything else. So let's break this down here on the board. Let me walk you through it. <clears throat> um, the nice part about this is there's not a lot for me to sit there and complain about. You guys know my biggest problem and what you guys keep signing day in and day out is contracts that offer a hourly rate that's taxable and then a lump sum for anything that is tax free. And that's where those hours between 36 and 40, you guys are losing money every single week for anything over 36 hours if this is a 36 hour work week. All you would be getting is just the taxable portion, which again has become an industry standard that you guys seem to accept day in and day out. And I'm telling you, you're the only industry I know that a, that a person would say, okay, I'm going to take this much tax-free, so just pay me my salary that's taxable. Um, this particular company is doing it the right way. They're actually showing this, which I'm going to assume, again, this is just an advertisement, I'd love to see what the contract actually looks like. So if any of you guys know the assignment I, I'm highlighting here and you actually went to work, please send me a copy of the contract to verify that this company did do it right or to see that they, that they actually did a bait and switch. <clears throat> but it looks to me on this contract that anything you work over 36 hours, you're going to get the combination of both of these things. Again, this is not a tax uh, lecture or a tax series, so I'm not going to judge this stuff. It actually looks pretty good. They're doing very little tax-free and a whole bunch taxable, which is probably the right way to go. <clears throat> if you took a stipend in housing, that would probably, I'm um, should be all tax-free as well. So that the ratios look good. But what I'm seeing from this is the first company besides ours <clears throat> that is actually saying that you would get the combination of both of these two figures for anything above and beyond that 36 hours. I also like the fact that they're showing a real true overtime rate of these two figures for, for overtime. They're actually a little bit higher. Uh, and I'll address that here in a second. <clears throat> but the nice part is this company is not just paying you time and a half of just this figure up here. They're paying you slightly more than time and a half of both these figures, which is the way it should be done. Last week I mentioned how you guys keep settling for just time and a half of a taxable amount. Or some of you are saying, well, I get double time. But you're getting double time of garbage. <laughs> Again, you have to really qualify these things. Double time doesn't mean anything to me. What you should be getting is at least time and a half of your total hourly compensation, not including the housing, because that's a fixed amount based upon the cost of living and what a company's gonna expect. So this is kind of its own separate entity. Let's talk a little bit about that overtime. 
Romero Cruz pointed out that there's a couple of threads that's talking specific about company X gives you guys a lump sum every time of overtime. I've seen 50 bucks an hour every time. My question for you is why does that overtime stay consistent when your hourly rate is probably fluctuating based upon the, the supply and demand for that assignment, high paying or low paying, some companies are offering a lump sum of 50 to $60 an hour for overtime every time. Look at that, consider that. Why is that a, a fixed amount? You guys can make the decision whether or not it's right or wrong, but my answer should be your overtime should fluctuate high and low based upon your hourly rate, based upon you know, the cost of living in that, in that assignment. If you're in a beautiful location in the middle of winter time and you're down in Texas and it's a lower paying position, your time actually should reflect that. If you're at a high paying position someplace where, uh, again, the, your, your hourly rate, the bill rate's high, your hourly rate's high, your time and a half should be much higher than that. So even at a $35 an hour rate, that's $52.50. So for those of you that are getting $35 bucks an hour and settling for $50, bucks, rethink that. It's not the right way to go. Again, this assignment looks to me like it's good, mostly because of this figure. What we have seen in the past is someone who said, I'll give you $48.95, and I'm just going to do the math here for you, 36 times 8 dollars 5 we're going to give you 289 and change as a lump sum. This is what you want to stay away from, because this clearly illustrates that the only thing you'd be getting for anything over 36 hours is this amount here. The nice part about this company is like ours, they're actually going to give you both. So um, I don't know what company this is, and, and uh, if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I didn't beat up a company. I'm certainly not dumb enough to tell you a company that's doing it right. Um, however, I like to see that there's at least another company out there that is doing this the right way. This is a good offer. Now, what I would challenge you to do is to, if you guys are looking at these, uh, these offers and someone has worked for this company or taken this assignment, please shoot me over a copy of, of the actual agreement that you signed, the actual contract that you signed, so I can verify that, in fact, this company did what they said they were going to do or, in fact, that they didn't. Um, the last thing I'll leave you guys with is realize that these job boards where people can just post anything they want to online, that's all it is. Oftentimes, a company doesn't even have control of their own recruiters. We do here. Most companies should. But realize that a recruiter can kind of go out there and say anything that they want to. And sometimes their company doesn't know what they're saying. So be careful of a company that does a little bit of baiting and switching. If you see a company that's offering something and then they are all of a sudden changing that, run away from that company. That's not good business practice. That's not good ethics. They shouldn't have to trick you into taking an assignment and then say, oh gosh, by the way, we goofed up and here's how much it's really going to pay. Leave that company in your rear view mirror and go with the company that's going to be up front with you at the very get-go. And like ours, and clearly there's other companies that will do the same thing. So thank you guys. We will see you guys next week and we're going to do uh, another one. P please keep sending those in. I'd love to see some actual contracts and you can blacken those out of people that are actually sending us um, a real offer so we can break it down and give you guys some good information. Thanks. We'll see you next Friday.